Hello and welcome to Freedom Church at Home. It's lovely that you're with us today. And if this is your first time with us, an especially warm welcome to you. And we do hope that you'll be blessed. My name is Paul and this is my wife, Karen, and we're team leaders at Freedom Church. As we are now at the end of August with the start of the new academic year imminent, we turn our attention to inviting others to come and experience a relationship with Jesus and how through discipleship he meets us where we are and brings us to where we flourish. He promises to bring life in all its fullness to those who follow him and that's good news. We're going to be looking at this over the next few weeks, understanding how this can happen in today's climate. We can be creative in finding ways to bring hope, encouragement and love of God to others and experience this for ourselves too, which we all need. Our theme today is a life transformed. We have interviewed our speaker, Paul Steele, who is who in his talk speaks about how his life can be changed, how his life has been changed over the years by Jesus. Let us start with a prayer before I make any more mistakes. (laughs) Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that we can come together and that your Holy Spirit is with each one of us in our homes. Our heart's desire is to look to you. We lay aside everything that distracts us. We come to worship you with all of our being. We open our hearts and our minds to receive your truth and we're ready to listen and learn from you. And so we invite you, Holy Spirit, to come and fill our hearts and focus our minds on you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Our scripture for today is from 1 Peter 5.10 and we've taken it from the Amplified Bible. And it says this, after you've suffered for a little while, the God of all grace who imparts his blessing and favour, who called you by his own eternal glory in Christ, will himself complete, confirm, strengthen and establish you, making you what you ought to be. With this thought in mind, let us go over to the worship team so we can worship this Christ. So take heart, let his love lead us through the night. Hold on to hope, take courage again. So take Let his love lead us through the night Hold on to home Take courage again Oh my troubles and oh my tears got a home he has overcome all my failures and all my fears got a love he has overcome all my heartache and all my pain got a healer he has overcome all my burdens and all my shame got our freedom he has overcome god of justice and god of grace god of freedom he has overcome god our refuge and god our strength god our healer Be high and lifted up. Be high and lifted up. 
hope be I am lifted up Jesus as you will glorify as you will lifting high your name be glorified hallelujah hallelujah you are Be high and lift it up, be high and lift it up, be high and lift it up. Jesus, as you will glorify, as you will lifting high, your name be glorified. Hallelujah, hallelujah, you Be I and lift it up, be I and lift it up, be I and lift it up. Jesus, as you will glorify, as you will lifting high, your name be glorified. All my troubles and all my tears And God of hope He has overcome All my failures and all my fears And God I love He has overcome All my heartache and all my pain God, our healer, He has overcome. Be I and lift it up, be I and lift it up, be I and lift it up. Jesus, as you may glorify. As you will lifting high, your name be glorified. Be I and lift it up, be I and lift it up, be I and lift it up. Jesus, as you will glorify, as you will lifting high, your name be glorified. my troubles and all my tears and God a hope He has overcome all my failures and all my fears and God a love He has overcome Thank you so much for the worship let me introduce Paul Steele to you all. We have known Paul for over 15 years. He's married to Paula and I spoke with him earlier. Here's what he had to say. Well, Paul, thank you ever so much for um, speaking to us. We're going to enjoy listening to your talk and we know that you very much share from your heart and your life um, what Jesus has done. And my first question, actually, Paul, to you is, have you ever wandered away from Jesus? And if so, what happened? Yeah, so, so um, yeah, I guess not, not long after um, becoming a Christian, you know, maybe I, I had a sort of a, a first honeymoon um, year, I, uh, maybe, um, and but but there was just some undealt issues. I think you know where uh, Jesus says, "Follow me," and uh, and I really did want to follow Jesus um, and follow His commands because I was realizing that they were they were better for me. 
they, they weren't always the easiest option um, or options I wanted to make, but, but I was finding out that, that life was just better um, following him. And um, unfortunately, I think, I think the, the, the world, the, the things around me, friends and alcohol and sex uh, uh, and watching things on, on the internet, um, unfortunately, I let them get a, a real grip on me. Uh, um, so my relationship with the Lord really did did suffer through that. Even though I knew he loved me, I didn't ever doubt he, he loved me, but I knew these things had to be dealt with. Um, and, and it took, unfortunately, several years and, and a divorce um, to finally think, yeah, Lord, I, I give up, I, I surrender, I, I want to follow you. Okay. Thank you for that one, Paul. That's really interesting. So can I ask you another question then, please? What place does Jesus take in your life now? Yeah, so now um, I, I know it's, it's easy to say first place, um, but I know he is taking first place more and more and more. I still, I still have my struggles. I still have a few doubts where I think, Lord, I don't quite understand why this happens, why that happens. Um, but, but I know, I know just by trusting God, just by trusting in his word and, and drawing close to him, I can make decisions now, um, i.e. I, I, the last two jobs, job changes I've had, um, I felt the Lord has asked me to do that. And um, they both involved pay cuts. Now, in a worldly sense, that, that is ridiculous. But I believe, you know, God says, I, I will look after you, seek first the kingdom of God, uh, and, um, and I'll provide everything else. And, and me and my wife, Paula, e even in taking pay cuts, we've still seen God provide, and provide enough and even a little bit more. That's lovely. That actually reminds me of that passage in Matthew six thirty three, which says, seek first the kingdom of God yeah. and his righteousness to be right with him. And all these things will be added unto you. That's really encouraging, Paul. And another question I'd like to ask is what part has the church played in all of this in your life as a Christian? from when you first became a Christian right up to now? What, what part has the church played in your life? The yeah, church being uh, a body of people, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I've, I value it a lot more now. Uh, um, I, I struggled. We, 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 with all respect, and it, and it, it wasn't my mum and dad's fault. It, it was me as much as anyone, but I, I think... I struggled a little bit with family life um, and, and didn't find it easy. Um, and and I, I found that in the past in church. Um, we, we won't always get on well, as well with everyone. You know, there, there'll be certain people we get on better with uh, and there's, there's nothing wrong with that. But, it, but it's make made me value whatever anyone's opinion is whether I agree with it or not to, to try and value that person because at the end of the day we're we're all trying to seek God to, to do his well do his will you know we're, we're on the same side yeah. and um, and it's it's lovely to be able to I can I can call certain people and, and just run some stuff to them and say, look, I'm struggling in this area. What Have you got any idea? What do you think? And um, often that they can come back, you know, with a great answer, with a scripture, with a bit of advice. Um, and and we're, we're living in a world at the moment, aren't we, where it, where it seems everything just seems to be becoming divisive and we've got problems, um, political problems, racial problems it, it it just seems that the world is imploding 
and yeah. and it's important. I'm seeing it's important to stay in church family. Uh, I love the Tuesday night prayer meetings that we have at Freedom because I believe God answers prayer, and it and it takes me outside of myself. Rather than me, 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 it, it makes me pray for other people and their needs and, and see God move in them, through them, and, and around them. Yeah, that's lovely. So in a way, you although you uh, found family life hard, and initially, by the sounds of it, that transferred into church at times, that those close relationships were difficult. It seems that Jesus has brought you through to a place where actually you really value and uh, enjoy that closeness. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. yeah it, it's it's something I, th- I think a lot of us when uh, when we become a Christian, we have to relearn some things and and things that God, God I find will sometimes put me in positions that don't always come naturally to me. But but that's where, you know, you know it says, doesn't it, um, in our weakness, that's where God's strength comes in. Yes. Um, so I find a strength to, to do things that I know isn't of me. If it was, if it was down to me, I think, no, I just want to stay in my little comfort zone. But, but I think the Lord loves us enough to, to push us and, and to change us um, so that we can see him do things that we in the natural perhaps know wouldn't have happened yeah. if, if it wasn't for him. That's lovely. So it's a place where you've been able to, God, the Lord's been able to teach you things and for you to grow and uh, discover new things. That's lovely. Well, thank you ever so much, Paul. We're really looking forward to listening to your story. And thank you for your time. God bless to you and Paula. (laughs) Today, Paul speaks to us on his life-changing experience as a teenager and expands on how his relationship with Jesus has been in the years from then until now. Hello there. My name's Paul Steele and um, I wanted to tell you uh, my testimony of how I first got saved. And I've, I've tried to base this talk on a book that I've got Um, it's called The Battle of Britain then and now and um, I want to tell you my testimony of how I got saved first got saved then and um, what things are like now and and maybe later talk to you about maybe when you first got saved what were things like then what are things like now what what's the the difference so as I say my name's Paul Steele I was born in south southwest London in 1962, uh, my mum, Daisy, God bless her, um, she had me and we were living in Wandsworth um, and we were living with her mum and dad, uh, my, my nan and granddad. Uh, she'd had me out of wedlock and um, so for the first 10 years of my life there was no no dad around and, and that left me a, a little bit confused and a little insecure. Um, I didn't quite know why I w- was there, what, what was the point of me being there, and and nobody ever talked about a, a dad or just... We just got on with life. And um, and then, bless her, she, my, my mum met then my stepdad, Bill, um, a, lov- a lovely man. Um, and we moved with uh, London Ho- Overspill, we moved out of London down to Haverhill in Suffolk. This this was in the in the early seventies, and um, as I say, my dad was a a, a, a lovely man. Uh, um, but I now know from my mum and dad, and I'm, I'm not knocking them. They were they were good to me. They never did anything bad. But I now know I went through a sort of a a, a passive. They call it passive abuse, and it's it's where you yeah mum and your dad they don't even though they're there they don't really do much with you at all and and again it just felt as though I was just there I was being tolerated and um this carried on through through my teens um and and at school I struggled I really did struggle um 
I, I, I couldn't comprehend a lot of stuff. I, I couldn't take in information. Uh, my, my handwriting was very poor. And um, I, I'd love some of the lessons and would want to ask a question, but, but just struggled in, in my mind. I could think that question, but getting it, getting it out verbally, I, I just struggled to do. So I, I felt quite useless throughout my school schooling, uh, become the class clown uh, um, and, and left school with nothing, with no qualifications and, and basically throw my education away. Um, when I left school, I, I had no job and the, the gang that I was in with, we, we'd, the, the craze then in the late 70s was glue sniffing um, and we'd get bags of glue and, and just go off for hours on end and just sniff this glue and just get out of it and um, it, it was just ridiculous really uh, um, I'd go out in an afternoon before I knew it it was pitch black and it was night time and, and I'd not seen the change in from daylight to night time and just life was was just hard I, I still struggled with the point of being here of, of wondering what this was all about and um, this was a bit of light relief, occasional light, light relief. Um, one day, I was in, in Hayhill in Tuffock, and um, I always remember I was just sniffing this bag of glue, and, and um, when all of a sudden I got a very sharp shock and, and a pain across my chest that, that was so painful, so painful, and it, it really shook me. And, and I struggled for breath, I struggled to breathe, and um, I, I could hardly stand up, and I just knew I had to get home uh, as quick as I could. And um, I started to walk slowly home, I, I couldn't go too fast, my, my test, chest was tight, and uh, I remember there being, uh, on our recreation ground at that time, um, a travelling um, missionary group, Christian missionary group. Didn't know much about them, just thought it was all a bit strange. But I felt that I should go to them. Th th this pain shook me so much that I honestly thought I was going to drop down dead. I was waiting to die. It's hard to explain, but I, I thought, I'm dying. I'm, this is what's, I'm just going to drop down dead at any minute. And a sort of a realisation... Uh, something inside of me, I just thought, if I died now, I, I would face hell. I would face hell. And, and that, I couldn't understand that. I thought, but I'm a nice person. I've never done anything drastically wrong. I've, I've been okay. I've been kind. I've been nice. But it, it scared me, that thought. I headed back home and then halfway through, I, I ended up on this... Uh, this caravan site, and um, and I knocked on the door, and I, I spoke to a to a man, and, and I said, "Please, I need help. I, I am I I really am scared. I'm dying. I I need help. I want to pray with somebody." And this man man he said, "Oh no, you you need to be very serious about prayer. You need to think about this. You need to go home and take this seriously, and not just dabble in prayer, and and come back." And um, thankfully, another man come up who I now know was the leader of that group. And um, he said, no, no, you come with me. You come with me. I'm going to pray with you. And, and we, I went to his, his caravan and he said, you kneel down there, kneel down. And I knelt down. And he started to explain the gospel to me about Jesus, about heaven, about how, hell, about sin. And, and, and I thought, I need God. I need God. If I died right now, I believe I would face hell. I really believe that. And I knelt and I prayed sincerely for God to forgive me and 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 to say sorry for my life, for the, the way that I'd led it. And um, and I just felt a peace, a peace starting to come over me. And I thought, that's God. That's a God peace. And it was something I'd never, ever felt or experienced before, way beyond alcohol, way beyond glue. 
Uh, it, it was just incredible. And it was like my whole past life flashed um, before me as though it, it was going. It was going and it was gone. And um, for, for a few weeks, I, I, I went home from there and for a good week, week and a half, I, I was in bed and I, I felt seriously ill. And, um, and I, I remember having a handkerchief they'd given me and clinging to it because it was sort of God to me in a way. And, and just praying, please, Lord, I'm, I'm sorry, I, please, I want to stay alive. I want to stay alive. And it, it was a horrible few days in a way, but slowly I, I began to experience a peace I've never felt before. Um, all I can say is my life, it, it, it just changed dramatically and, and, and quickly. And I know maybe your testimony might not be like that. And that's okay. That's okay. We all have different experiences. Um, when I, when I look back now, you know, I, I was embarrassed by my testimony of glue sniffing. I was embarrassed by it. Um, we, we don't have to hang out all our dirty washing about everything we do. But I knew that it was a part of my life that I, I had to embrace. And um, if, if it wasn't for that part of my life, I may not have become a Christian. Um, I'd left school with nothing and um, I started to, to get better. I was, I was unemployed and um, I was sat on my settee in, in my front room, in my living room one day, and um, I just felt a voice say to me, I want you to go to the back of the estate where I lived, to a field. I just felt it was God saying, go to that field, go to the middle of it, and I want you to pray to me. I want you to thank me for saving you. And um, I thought, I've lost it. I've lost it. Maybe I've gone over the top with this stuff. I've gone mad. But I just felt, I'm sure this is God. I got my sister's bike. I pedaled as fast as I could to this field. It was five, ten minutes on a bike. I got to this big field. I put the bike where I hid the bike. And I started to walk to the centre of this um this field and as I'm walking as I say I just felt God saying pray to me just thank me for, for saving you and I'm, I'm looking around as, I, as I'm walking and I'm thinking I hope nobody sees me doing this um, I get to the centre of this field and I just kneel down and I just pray Lord thank you thank you so much for saving me Lord I, I, I don't know what I would do without you I, I, I'm just so thankful and I felt that God spoke to me again and just said, I want you to go back home now. And, and when you get home, there'll be a letter there and uh, it will involve, it will have money in it. It, it will involve money. And I thought, all right, okay, okay. I got back on my bike. I zoomed home even faster than I'd gone. And um, I went in through the back gate and uh, I always remember I went in through the kitchen door and my, my mum was stood in the kitchen. I just said, Mum, Mum. I said, uh, has the postman been? And she said, yes, he has. She said, actually, he's literally just been. And I went out to the to our front door and there on the mat was a brown envelope. And I, I opened that envelope and um, there was a, check inside my doll check it was my doll check now the point of the story is more I started to hear I could hear God talks to me God talks to me and, and I just find that incredible that God could talk to me uh, a verse I just read a verse it's uh, 1 Corinthians 126 it says remember dear brothers and sisters that few of you were wise in the world's eyes or powerful or wealthy when God called you. And um, the point the point of my story is, my, my case, I was in a complete mess. And um, the point of my story is that no matter what situation you're in now, what your past is, if, if God can change me, honestly, he can change you. 
and um, and I realised that God had given me a gift of, of hearing from him and, and later on I, I started to realise that I could speak God's word and what I believe God was saying to other people into their lives and I hope some of you may have may have been on the, the other end of that. Um, but unfortunately I didn't take my faith seriously and um, I didn't deal with some things and, and very quickly got into alcohol, uh, sex and, and pornography, watching things on the internet and um, getting totally absorbed in that sort of stuff and um, just not being able to control myself, not fully giving myself to God. And, and I would go so far with God and then it would just be, just something would happen and, and I'd just do something ridiculous um, and it would just stop my walk with God again. And um, Proverbs thirteen nineteen it says this. It says, It is pleasant to see dreams come true, but fools refuse to turn from evil to attain them. And I realised that, that I still wanted to do things from my past. I still found a pleasure in them. And, and I, I realised that I had to now be serious with God and let God deal with me in some of those, in some of those things. Um, I got involved then um, with um, Freedom Church, it was, as it was, I think it was called then, and um, with LL Ministries. And, and, and they went with me through through a lot of things of, of my past, the situations I, I was getting into and, 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 and just bringing the word of God to me. I, I, I just, even as a Christian, blew it, absolutely blew it. And uh, I, I remember about 10 years ago that I was sitting in a pub and, and I, I was drunk, and I mean drunk, um, I, I, I was sat on a stool. I was I was holding the bar, literally holding on to the bar, so that I would not fall off of my stool. I, I had a cigarette in my mouth, um, and I and I sat. And it, even as a, a Christian, I, I thought, God, I can't do this. I cannot do this. I, I'm I can't get out of this stuff. And. Um, as I say, slowly but surely, when I started then, though, to take things seriously and let God let God deal with me and started to trust God in his word. Um, and I had to start believing God because I, I then ended up with a divorce. I, I treated my wife badly. Um, I split our family up. Um, all I could think about was me, myself and I. As long as I was all right, I didn't care about anybody else. And that's even as a Christian. And then I started to really trust on God's word. And I had to, because I knew I had to rely on God to be forgiven for the, some of the stuff I'd done. Um, Psalm 130, Psalm 130, verses 3, 4 and 5, it says this, Lord, if you kept a record of our sins, who, O oh Lord, could ever survive but you offer forgiveness that we might learn to fear you. I am counting on the Lord. Yes, I am counting on him. I have put my hope in his word. And, and I, I had to focus on God's word. I had to believe God's word because I needed forgiveness. I needed forgiveness. Now, I can remember hearing a, a message uh, and, and a man said in it, and, he, and he, he said three words, and the words were broken, mended, second-winded. And I, I have known in life what it is to be broken. By the grace of God, I've known now what it is to be mended. And by God's grace even more, I now know what it is to be second-winded. Broken, mended second winded but I wonder where you, you're at I wonder what three of those words would, would relate to you the most are you broken or are you broken but now you're mended 
but are you now broken, mended, but second winded? And, and I'm praying for, for many of you that you're going to be second winded. And that is what God has done for me. That second winded. Think, things have changed dramatically. God has changed me dramatically. And, and, and that can happen for you too. That can honestly happen for you. My, my past was just ridiculous. It, 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 it was a farce. I, it, I, I was a part-time Christian, whatever you want to call it. I, I, I wanted all the good bits. And um, I, I just blew it time after time after time. But, but by the grace of God, um, the Lord got hold of me. Uh, another verse, Psalm 119, 71, it says, My suffering was good for me, for it taught me to pay attention to your decrees. I, I had to learn a lot of things the hard way. I, I really did. It, it was just ridiculous. Um, but I hope you don't have to learn the hard way. So I, I know then that, that back then, if I thought about God, I, if I wondered if, if I could say what was God like to me then, not now, but then he would have been a sergeant major. I'd have been OK as long as I was did everything perfectly and well. But if I didn't, God would soon let me know and he would soon, soon tell me what I'd done wrong. But I know now he's a loving heavenly father. Can, can I relate quite to God yet as a father? Not, not quite, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. But I know that, that the Lord is somebody that I can trust in. So I just want to encourage you with maybe what was God like when you first got saved and what is he like now? What? What gifts did you have then and what gifts do you have now? Is, is there gifts that you had then that the Lord's saying now, that's enough. I'm just going to, I've got something else for you. Is, is there gifts that you're still trying to hold on to that the Lord's saying, no, enough's now. I, I want to I wanna lead you down another course, another road. Just be challenged, just be open to, to hearing God. For, this is coronavirus time. We, we've been in lockdown now for nearly two months. We've we probably all had a lot of time to think about things. And uh, I just wonder where, where you're at. Is, is there something maybe that was in your life from the past that you've been embarrassed about? I know I, I was embarrassed. I, I, I admit it, I was. Um, it was a foolish thing to get involved in. Is there something in your life you're embarrassed about? Do you need to speak it out to somebody? You don't need to speak it out to everyone. Maybe you can start first by just speaking it out to the Lord. I, I know that there's, there's been some things in my life that I've just had to embrace and be honest with myself and think, Lord, I, I, I need help in this. I need your help. And then I've gone on to tell somebody else, somebody, a trusted friend. But if there's something in your life that you're embarrassed about, speak it out. If you can, first of all, speak it out to God. And I'm sure, I feel you, you'll, you'll feel a release in it and an empowering of being able to speak it out. Now I'm able to speak about the glue sniffing. It, it was a period in, in my time that was just ridiculous, but it's gone. It's gone. And, and the Lord wants you to know there's stuff in your life. It's gone. It's finished. It's finished. You know, the, the verse I'd leave you with is from 1, 1 Peter 5.10. It's in the Amplified Bible. I'm going to read it out to you. And I just pray that, that, that this would bless you and encourage you to keep going no, no matter what you're going through now, things can change and things will change. I've seen, honestly, this verse come to fruition. I've seen the fruit of it in my own life. And it says, 1 Peter 5.10, amplified version, it says, And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who imparts all blessing and favour, 
who has called you to his own eternal glory in Christ Jesus will himself complete and make you what you should or what you ought to have been. He will establish and ground you securely and strengthen and settle you. I, I know what it is to, to feel unsettled. I, I know what it is to feel weak. But I know that I've seen these words come to life in my own life. And I know that God can do that for you too, no matter what your past is or what your circumstances are now. I, I just hope this has been a blessing to you. I, I really do. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Paul, for your honesty this morning. In response to this talk, we invite you to join us in this prayer. Thank you, Lord, that you are the one who takes our sin, our guilt and our shame. You are the one who gives us hope. You're the one who transforms us from the inside out. Mm. Lord, we come to you as we are and we ask you to take our life where we are now and lead us along your path and bring us to the place where you want us to be. We want to be wholehearted followers of you, Jesus. We want to become mature men and women of God who flourish. Holy Spirit, would you come and speak and fill each one of us afresh as we wait on you? Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 And now for our last worship song.
Thank you so much for listening today. All our past talks are on our YouTube channel, Freedom Church Colchester, and are at We're excited what Jesus is going to be doing in your lives. We may not ever know, but it will be good because God is good. So let's pray a closing blessing. See if I can get this one right. The Lord bless you and keep you, protect you, sustain you and guard you. The Lord make his face shine upon you with favour and be gracious to you, surrounding you with loving kindness. The Lord lift up his face upon you with divine approval and give you peace, a tranquil heart and life abundantly. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. Goodbye. Goodbye.